Stuart, how are you? Hi, Sinead. Uh, Stuart, well, first of all, will Ty Furlong play against uh, Scarlett this weekend? Yeah, we'll just train today. Um, we've got training tomorrow. Uh, so hopefully, um, if he comes through that, then that's the plan. That's that we're going to involve him uh, this week with a view to um, hopefully going into the Ireland camp after that. And Johnny Sexton obviously said in the press release that the RFU are going to assess him. But do you think he will be fit for Sunday week? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think pretty optimistic, really. I think it was a minor... Um, uh, a minor thing, really, and yeah, I, I've not seen him to be honest. Um, but certainly speaking to him after the game, he was pretty optimistic, and I think all the news since then has been pretty optimistic too. For the um, week that's in it, when you see obviously so many players coming and getting a call up for Ireland, uh, how does it affect you guys? I mean, you've just had a good big win, and then you know the whole squad kind of gets obliterated and taken off. I mean, what, what's that like around the place now? It's exciting, actually. Um, you know, it, it obviously it's great that we've lost we've lost seventeen players and, and Ireland have um, gone into camp. But you know, for us, we see it as a real opportunity for the next um, the next generation of players to come through now. But also, we're talking about players like Jack Conan, Dan Levy, who've just missed out on selection, who who clearly want to prove a point. Um, Josh Murphy, Ryan Baird, you know, Ross Maloney played well at the weekend. He's available. You know, we've got a lot of good players. Um, and then the likes of Harry Byrne, Kieran Frawley, who've been waiting patiently for their, their opportunity. So there's a lot of young lads who will be able to train now so we can bring up the, the academy lads into the squad. Um, but there's a lot of senior squad players who've been waiting for the opportunity. You know, um, Keen Keller on the wing. Um, we've got Max O'Reilly back potentially to get another opportunity. So I think it's, I really enjoy these blocks, to be honest, because obviously the lads go away play for Ireland and we can always watch and support them from afar. But then you've got this really hungry group of... Um, young players or players who've missed out on Ireland selection who want to prove a point. And, you know, for us as uh, Leinster and our, uh, um, the psychology going into these games is, you know, yes, we won at the weekend, but we're still behind Ulster on, uh, in, in the table. Um, and we've got Scarlets, as you know, and then the next five games are all with teams that are in our conference. So we need to win those five games during the Six Nations window in order to put ourselves in a good place for the Pro 14. And obviously then we'll deal with um, you know, Europe or whatever happens in Europe uh, post Six Nations. I suppose just one other thing on that: Are there any kind of long faces around the place? Like you mentioned, like Dan Levy, you think of Luke McGrath as well. Even Dave Carney's been playing brilliant stuff. Like, what's their reaction been like in around Leinster on a day like today when they, they're the ones who haven't gotten the call? Yeah, no. Well, they do get a call. To be fair, to Andy, I mean, Andy gives them all the <laughs> ring, and and, and um, but. Um, uh, to not get picked, yeah, they, they are disappointed. But you know, I try and pick them all up during the day and um, ask them how they're feeling and and try and change their mindset back into well, let's let's divert our energy now back into playing well for Leinster because if you if you play well for Leinster, then um, you know Ireland's selection will change during the Six Nations. You know, I know that I guess more than anyone. So make sure you're ready. Make sure you're playing well. Make sure you're fit. Uh, make sure you're motivated. Uh, and then um, your chance your chance could easily come again. So. It's about flipping the mindset, really. A lot of them, to be fair to the players, they've already done it, you know, they're disappointed, but the good thing is they've got games they can play in for Leinster. Um, there's nothing worse that if you don't get picked in, then there's nothing to, to go at, do you know what I mean? So um, I spoke to Lukey this morning, uh, Ed Byrne, uh, Dave Carney, um, you know, there's a few of them, really, but, uh, but they've been good in trend today and we've got a good game this Saturday to, to get stuck into. Thanks, Stuart. Yeah, hi, Stuart. Uh, I'm just looking at the game on on uh, on Saturday and um, the uh, coming into half time. JJ Hanron had a penalty there and uh, came back off the post. And um, at at the time the score was ten three, and then Lindsay came down the field and got a penalty. And and just on half time it was ten six going in at half time. How much of a big mental factor was that for Leinster? Yeah, I think it was a big factor. I don't think it was the only factor in the outcome of the game, but it was definitely a, a factor. And I think credit to the players um, for having the mindset to want to try and um, you know get the get the penalty and, and go after go after three points before half time. You know, we could easily have um, you know kicked the ball off the field, got in at half time, and then and then readdress things. But um, the players went went with a positive mindset. 
and uh, uh, and they got the rewards. You know, they got the penalty, and as you say, you know, suddenly 13-3 from what could have been to 10-6 was a, was a big swing. But I thought our positive mindset reflected in the second half as well. Um, you know, I thought we kept trying to to play. There was a tap and go from Luke McGrath. Um, you know, there was a breakout from our own 22. Um, obviously, some of the line out um, calls, you know, to the tail, etc. Uh, so I thought. It reflected, you know, a slow start by us, but also a more positive mindset that we'd adopted halfway through the first half that, you know, obviously helped helped towards the end. And obviously, um, it was a big game from James Ryan. I think he, he had the most tackle, tackle count in the game. So it's a very positive sign for him going in towards the international window. Yeah, yeah. No, he was excellent. I mean, he's, you know, properly... Invested in the game and, and and in the team and in the performance, uh, and um, you know he, he's a big player who comes up with big moments as well. Uh, I thought his line out I was really pleased with his line out. His line out defence was very good. Um, as a defender, he's, he's he's very physical, and he's the type of player that Ireland are going to need playing well. You know, for them to be to be excellent in the Six Nations. But you know him and Ty Byrne. Ty Byrne was probably equally as good for their team. So you put the two together. Hopefully, there's a good combination there. If, if Ian Henderson's injured. Um, so, yeah, I think Ireland will be in good shape, but James is in great form at the moment, and, uh, yeah, he's, he, he'll do well this Six Nations, I'm sure. Thanks, Stuart. Hi, Stuart. Um, just uh, one for me. Um, in terms of the slow start that you mentioned, what was the main factor behind that, do you feel, or was it just one of those things that can happen um, in certain games? Not really. It shouldn't happen. Obviously, not in a game like that. Um, I think um, probably we were a little bit slow off the mark defensively to start with, um, and you know Munster obviously got some good gain line, um, which means that sometimes you can get caught in the back of the tackle, um, and that happened. They got a penalty. Um, we were a bit slow to set on the on the line out, and um, we didn't quite get the numbers right, so we were chopping and changing. We were reactive defensively rather than proactive, um, I think, in the first 10 minutes. And as a consequence, you know, Munster are, are too good a team to be like that. So as a consequence, they, they took the, um, their chances and got the 10-0 lead. So, you know, it's, it wasn't a great start from us, um, mainly, mainly in defence. Um, obviously, the aerial game and the 50-50s, you know, they were winning at the time. But I thought we clawed our way back into the game and hung in there, clawed our way back in and... Um, I'd say a far more positive um, approach from you know the first twenty minutes onwards.